you know, I think in the future, it's going to be much easier for organizations to collect data. And I know that that sounds bizarre, right? Because I know most of us spend most of our time trying to figure out how do we get as much information as quickly and easy as we can. But I do believe that, that customers will be more willing to manage their preferences with you and their intentions with you if you can demonstrate that it will change and improve the way you communicate with them. And so, you know, you, people will tell you about their interests, they'll tell you about how many people they've got in their household, and you need to think about new and interesting ways of doing this, right? You know, if, you, if you, all you're ever going to do is ask people to select things from drop-down menus, then they're hardly going to interact with you. So think about ways, you know, gamifying it and making it interesting like we have here. Ask them about their preferences, but remember, if you ask somebody for a preference, make sure you use it. Don't let them tell you that their email address is their preferred channel and then send them lots of direct mail. All right. <laughs> You're laughing. You do that, don't you? Mm. You're not alone, right? But what, you know, what would happen if I, if I ask you a question and then I completely ignore it? How would, you, how would that make you feel? But yeah, that's what you're doing to your customers. And then you use all of that information. Now, I think one of the biggest issues with big data is actually the volume. There's so much data. There are so many transactions that you know, our little brains are actually beginning um, to max out. And so the reason that I push the collection of preferences is because customers' preferences will help you and guide you through the data. They'll tell you, if you're interacting with them often enough, they'll tell you, because transaction data is all very interesting, but it's a little bit flat. But if a customer can tell you what they're interested in and you can use that interest to guide you through that data, you can get some very interesting results. But it's all about being able to manage it as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to collect all my preferences, then I'm going to collect all of this transaction data. And transaction data is gold, right? Millions and millions and millions of transactions. Every interaction that a customer has with you, whether it's on a mobile, whether it's on online, whether it's through one of your branches, whether it's just picking up their phone, all of those interactions are gold, and we'll talk a bit about that. But what I really want to do, as Karen was saying, is actually bring them all together. So I want to make sure that my online data is not siloed from my offline data. Why? Because if I can bring these two things together, I can create this really powerful insight. Because 65% of people who buy your product have searched for it online first. Now, if you're trying to figure out who's interested in your product and you don't have this data connected, it's like walking around with a blindfold on. Right? The biggest challenge for us in big data is that most of the data that's being created by your customers is now outside your firewall. That's the big challenge. They're creating it all over the place, and all you've got is this piece here. So you've got to start to connect all of that data. So a customer you know, has a cookie. Um, you know, we're tracking all of their behavior, whether they log in or they, or they don't. Um, we're looking at the products that they're buying, and they may not buy it, they may just browse for it, right? We're then connecting that to all of the things that we know about them offline, right? Because somebody could be looking for baby products, but they may actually be a grandmother. They could be an auntie, they could be a friend. But by connecting it to some offline data, I can actually get more insight, because I know this person's changed the address. A lot of people do that for some crazy reason when they're having a baby. Um, and I know that you've brought, you know, other, other products that are more like you would if you, were, if you were actually having a baby. And then I can make you an offer. But there's an example of where we need to bring all of that data together and that one channel in and of itself is not enough. What the online channel tells us is that you're in market. But it doesn't tell me what sort of person is in market necessarily. It just says somebody is in market. By marrying it with the offline data, you know, where I can get age and demographics and previous transaction behavior, I can actually have a much better idea of who you are. And the offer that I make you, the presentation that I make you, will be very different based on who you are. It's the difference between contextual marketing, right, and relationship marketing. <laughs>